Hey guys, welcome to another video. Okay, this is gonna be a short video of me explaining to you the code okay, behind my previous robot. Okay, I have uploaded the video of that uh, tutorial okay, which I walking you through the robot itself. But for today, I will only show you the code that I use uh, in order to run the robot and as you can see here I have two uh, Python code here that I have uh, placed in this uh, DS4 robot folder so the first code that I would like to uh, walk you through is the joytest.py uh, that is my main Python code okay, used to control the robot movement and for the second Python code, which is the laser joy test, okay, it is uh, added with the ability to control a few components uh, on my robot, which is the laser beam and the servo. Okay, I have two uh, S90 servos uh, mounted on that robot. Okay. If you have watched the video, okay, you will notice that I have two uh, small servos okay, which use to uh, mount my Pi camera so that I could move the Pi camera uh, around so it will have that pan and tilt uh, movement. Alright so let's get into our first code okay i will open this uh, using the idle so we are inside the code now actually the fundamental the base of this code is actually taken from the joystick.py uh, code made by this uh, PyBorg foundation okay they have created all the libraries uh, needed and all the examples as well so you could uh, get started with your project uh, without having to learn from the documentation and all that so here as you can see in the libraries okay in the libraries uh, list here we are importing a few uh, standard library which is time the os and sys and also the lastly pygame okay all this library comes uh, pre-built in the latest version of uh, raspbian but here uh, we have also uh, an additional library called zero book and this is the library that we need to install in our Raspberry Pi you need to download it from the github page uh, of uh, PyBorg organization so this is the fundamental code a fundamental library in our code so without zero book okay why are you zero book because actually uh, this is optional okay this is optional Okay, you have to use this if you use uh, the motor controller made by PyBorg. Okay, as you uh, have uh, seen in my previous video, I am using the ZeroBot controller. Okay, instead of using the generic uh, motor controller that uh, most people use for their, their Arduino robot. Okay which is uh, the L298N okay, and the smaller brother the L293D okay. both of them are also um, can be used in this uh, project but because I have bought this motor controller so uh, it's better for me to show you okay, the benefit of using this controller rather than the generic the generic one 
so uh, here I declare a few okay quite a lot of things going on here but most of them are actually just the axis declaration okay this axis declaration is actually related to your dual shock uh, controller and the library that will handle the dual shock itself is the pygam okay pygam is a module or library in python used to to make a video game actually okay it is used to make a python game i think inside this recipe and you have this a uh, game and inside here you have minecraft uh, okay what about if we look at the folder here i'm not sure if i have one uh, do i have games folder yeah this python game folder okay if you have a fresh installed uh, Raspbian or S on your Pi, you will have this Python games uh, folder at your home directory. So uh, here I have moved it to my uh, own uh, DAM folder because I don't want them to uh, clutter my home directory. So I just want to have a few folders outside here and the rest I uh, dump them in this folder so uh, we have this Python game uh, folder and inside here you have a few uh, games which I never tried actually uh, let's let me try at least one one or two game I know, uh, but I do not know if I could run the game or not. But let's just try it. Fight the game. So let's uh, try that uh, worm game. Wormy. Wormy.py. So we run that game using uh, fight the wormy.py. Alright. So we are inside the game now. So what to do next? All right. So it's actually a snake game from your Nokia phone. So you can just control this uh, worm or snake using your arrow key. It's quite quite nice. The graphic is quite good, considering you created this game using just a Python code and Python library it's quite powerful guys it's quite powerful so this is the first time I ever try this game just for the sake of showing you how how you can build your own game using this Pygame library uh, how to get that one it's quite fast right now I think it's getting faster oh damn no. I want to catch that one before I exit the game alright so okay, that's all game over if we only scored 14 so let's take a look at the code itself Wormy enable clone by Al Swigart. Wow, that's the name of the creator. It was met uh, in 2012. It was quite an old game. So basically, you can learn how to make your own Python game based on this code. You can learn from this code. It's not go it's not a lot going on here just just have uh, a few functions to to work with 
so I think that's all that I want to show you about this uh, Py Pygame library. So let's get back to our code here. And okay, most of this actually comes from the default, okay, from the default uh, program of Zero Book, especially this Zero Book init, okay. I have created this uh, function to hold everything that involves uh, initialization of the board. So here we set up the board, uh, the the board itself by calling this uh, zero board class. Okay, we have created this uh, zb object. Okay, and then we init the uh, the object using this init function and the rest are just the zero box program itself so you don't have to worry about this and the second function that I have here is the dual shock for init okay the first one just now for you to initialize the zero box controller and this second function is used to handle your uh, controller input okay you need to use this pygame.init and then this uh, library will try will attempt to set up the joystick okay it will wait for uh, joystick uh, input okay using this uh, bluetooth bluetooth uh, device okay for your information, the uh, DualShock 4 is connected to the Raspberry Pi using Bluetooth uh, communication. So here we have this uh, all this uh, controller setup code. And lastly, this is the the part that I use to control the robot. So we use this uh, function that I'm gonna call letter. You can see at the bottom here. This is where we run all this function. Okay, starting from zero bot init. After it has uh, finished that, it will proceed with the workshop for init. And after it completes, lastly it will perform this robot control. So the robot control part will be. Uh, the forever uh, forever looping function uh, as you can see here we have this while running and we have set this running to true means that this part of the code will be run indefinitely see here loop indefinitely so to drive your uh, robot, uh, since it is a two-wheel drive robot, I only have drive left and drive right uh, variable here. So uh, if you have four-wheel drive robot, you will need to uh, have four declaration. And here is uh, the line lines that we. Uh, used to get the input value from the controller okay they name it as event okay here we have this pygame.event.get uh, this is where your code will try to grab any information coming out from your controller so it will put the data inside this events uh, variable. So whenever you have uh, something going on, okay, it will return an event. So here you will handle each event individually. So the events are, okay, it probably if you want to quit the Pi game so we will exit this uh, while true loop but uh, if 
it detects any uh, joy button down input okay it will return a true for this head event uh, variable also uh, the same goes for this joy joy axis motion which is the joystick the two joystick on your controller it will also return a uh, true for this head event so if head event true it will perform all this okay, it will perform all these uh, lines starting from here up until here so if no event detected means nothing will be uh, processed so this part will only be executed if your head event is true means if you press anything on the controller so this is where you get the uh, axis position okay the axis po position actually read uh, from negative 1 to positive 1 okay uh, but for the purpose of this robot we want to have our axis position the r2 uh, the R2 trigger specifically to be at zero level okay whenever we release the the trigger if you don't press the trigger we want the value to be zero not negative one okay initially by default it will give this negative one value so what does that mean if you plan to use the R2 trigger for your robot to uh, move uh, forward to accelerate forward your robot will directly spin the wheel okay after you have uh, executed this code so in order to defeat this uh, problem you have to reset that uh, axis value to zero by pushing it to zero okay we minus the up down value with one oh sorry i think the the first the default value when you execute this code is one not negative one so here we have one minus one so your throttle will be zero okay so that uh, uh, that is how I uh, solve this issue, and then I created this uh, simple if statement. If throttle is less than negative one, uh, we will limit that value to negative one. So now, if you press your trigger, R two trigger, the value, the throttle value will be going down okay it will go to the negative side okay starting from zero to all the way to negative one so uh, because i want to limit the value to negative one so we do not want the value to exit and we can uh, prevent that using this if statement so here I print out the throttle value so you can, you, so you can uh, read the value from your terminal as you press the trigger. And right here, okay, the next uh, thing that we need to handle is the axis left right uh, value. This is for you to turn your uh, robot left and right. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, right and so this will grab the axis the right joystick value okay but uh, for joystick value you don't have to do anything since if you don't don't push your joystick around if you don't fiddle with your joystick the value will stay uh, at zero 
only when you push the joystick it will trigger some value and here I have this uh, L2 axis uh, value that will be used to reverse the car actually I am not getting the axis value I am getting the button value because the trigger will uh, have two uh, mapping attached one is the axis value one is the button value okay so the axis l2 with will have its own axis value and it also have its button value so we want to get this button value if this button value is true then you reverse the uh, polarity polarity of the throttle as you can see here we have this uh, negative uh, sign in, in front of our throttle means that we use that to reverse the car otherwise we will move forward as you have this positive throttle value so this is where you uh, handle the turning okay, turning power of your robot okay, using a simple uh, mathematics here uh, we have this multiplication uh, formula so, and then you can read the value as well using this print statement and lastly this is actually uh, the part that uh, are responsible for driving the wheels okay you have the set motor you are calling the set motor 1 and set motor 3 okay wh why I use 1 and 3 okay since the zero board controller have four output you have the M1 M2 M3 and M4 but inside the docu documentation of uh, zero box if you have a two wheel drive robot set up you you can use okay you are advisable you are recommended to use this uh, configuration which is the left wheel will be connected to your motor one and the right wheel will be connected to your motor three so they are uh, recommended for the sake of simplicity and lastly okay there's nothing uh, a lot more that we can discuss here only here we have a, a, a delay okay for the overall process I guess but I never really uh, focus on this I never really concern on the interval okay where we can we get okay the interval is zero actually okay the interval is zero meaning that there's no delay at all for this uh, code okay it is important to know that okay you cannot have any delay actually Okay, when you are trying to control this robot, you must have a fluid, a fluid uh, input of data. Okay, not um, not ob obstructed by this uh, delay. If you have some delay in this code, your robot will not run. Uh, smoothly okay it will cause uh, some jittering movement later on because you uh, have slight delay before your robot process the next uh, command so this is uh, the thing that you need to understand as well so lastly if uh, we have this keyboard interrupt okay keyboard interrupt um, exception 
so once you press the Ctrl plus C okay, it will mean that you want to exit the code so it will uh, turn off the motor so I guess that's all for this uh, main code here so let's take a look at the laser joy test okay, before I end this video so the rest of the code is uh, basically the same as the previous one we only have an additional library here so here I am using the GPIO 0 library and I am importing two uh, classes uh, two function from this class which is the LED and the servo so the LED will handle my laser beam and also I have light here which actually I haven't implemented uh, in hardware yet so this is just for the re reservation of that uh, GPIO pin and these are the servo handlers okay I have attached my servo my tilting servo to GPIO 21 and the panning servo to GPIO 20 and I name it to tilt servo and pan servo alright and then here is where I allocate my joystick value to control the servo so I use the the right joystick uh, for controlling the servo and I use the left joystick for controlling the movement of the car okay I, I think I have mentioned it incorrectly uh, in the previous code uh, where I said that I use the right joystick to control the movement no I use the left joystick to control the movement I use the right joystick to control the servos so let's uh, get at the bottom here inside our robot control this is where I created simple uh, algorithm for this laser and servo I only have these uh, few lines to handle both components okay the first if if statement is used to get the button uh, assigned to control my laser if I'm not mistaken I set my X button to uh, to turn the laser on and off so here as you can see we are using the GPIO library and it is just as simple as you getting the state the current state of the the pin the GPIO pin and then you set the value of the laser by simply inverting the current state of the the pin itself okay you need to try this okay this simple code is actually very powerful and it is very it looks very simple but the process behind these two lines is fairly complex for newbie uh, especially if you plan to use the standard rpi.gpio library for this purpose okay it's not going to be too line of code to handle that process you need to have um, multiple lines in order to accomplish the same uh, objective the same goes to my light switch I use another function inside GPIO library GPIO 0 library which is the toggle okay, the toggle is even more powerful because it will automatically detect the current state and it will just invert the state okay so basically these two are uh, having the same uh, process okay they are using the same process 
It's just that there's a lot more going on uh, behind this toggle function. Okay, this is um, a little bit uh, manual. Okay, this is a little bit manual because I need to have this knob okay, inverter. But inside this toggle, everything is done in the code itself so you don't have to do anything i could also use this toggle function to uh, control my laser laser beam so this is just for me to show you your uh, the alternative that you can use to control your components so lastly, here is where I get my uh, axis value, axis tilt and axis pan from the uh, axis that I, I have assigned earlier which is the axis 5 and axis 2. So I will get the value coming up from that uh, movement. That will be used to control my servo. So you can see here, it is as simple as assigning this value to tilt servo dot value. So what does this mean? Okay, it will grab the tilt value. The tilt value is actually ranging from negative one to one. The same goes to. Oops, sorry. The same goes to your pen. So here we will only get uh, this range of values and the value will be directly assigned to this servo. Okay, that is the power of uh, GPI or zero library. You can simply use this dot value uh, method. Okay, I cannot explain to you uh, further into this. I'm not an expert in this GPIO uh, zero library as a whole, but I just know how to use this library to make uh, our life easier. So that's basically it. The simplest way for you to control your servo is using this GPIO zero library. But if you plan to challenge yourself even more, you can use uh, something like the uh, Adafruit, okay, the PCM uh, 9865 if I'm not mistaken. You can use that library as well. It is a PWM library made by Adafruit. You can uh, control up to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can control up to 16 servos on a single i squared c communication you can use i squared c communi uh, pins on the pi to control all 16 servos so that is very powerful uh, for this purpose for my project i directly connecting my servo to the gpio pin so uh, stay tuned for another video in future uh, thanks for watching.